the most detailed string library ever. Is that what I was promising you? Yes, and I think it's probably true. What we're looking at today is a brand new library from VSL, Vienna Symphonic Library, uh, called Elite Strings. And it's basically their chamber strings offering. And it's uh, six first violins, um, five seconds, four violas, four cellos, and three basses. So you've got, what, 21? How many is that? Oh, don't make me do maths. Uh, uh, 22 uh, players. I think um so it's a realistic chamber sized orchestra it's the kind of size of string section which you know on many projects you would you just might be able to persuade the producer to give you the money but also it's a really quite a modern sound the chamber string sound and i think it's uh, one which is getting increasingly popular now when i say it's the most detailed um the point i make quite a lot is um a lot of libraries will give you shorts and longs. They might give you staccato and spiccato, and they might give you a couple of variations on long. But that is nothing like what it's like if you're a real player playing a real instrument. You don't play the same note twice the same way. And so if you want your music to sound real, to breathe, to have that, you know, a realness about it, whether you're putting in a pop arrangement or whether you're doing a film score or writing just a piece of string music because you want to, you're going to need quite a lot of articulations. I'll give you an example using my good friend, Metronome. Look, if you listen carefully... Now, if I'd sampled, you know, Metronome short, for example, no no, no two of those are going to be the same. It'll just go... Beep, beep, beep. No, you know, and even if you have round robins, which is a way of cycling through different notes, you're still not getting to, the, to grips with the different ways in which players play. And that really is why uh, the VSL um, Elite Strings is so uh, effective. Now look, what you, uh, uh, oh, hello, they're trying to talk to me, okay. So the introductory price, uh, it, this is a premium product. So the introductory price is 325 euros uh, for the standard library and what's that? 540 for the uh, full library and that's going to go up to 445 for the standard and 740 for the full library. So this is uh, you know a professional product and um, but what you're getting is an um, you know exceptional attention to detail. Shall I show you what we mean? Right let's get stuck into uh, the uh, instruments themselves um, and -da -da, here it is um, right this is which one's this is this violin one or is this the cello let me just get rid of that for a moment and get the uh, violin one up here we go hello violin one hello guy now um, so here's your shorts That's detaché. You see, here we go. Look, so you got short staccato, and you have two variations on these things: staccato, spiccato, detaché. Now, so you've got four different ways of playing short, and you've got uh, with some of them you've got this bold or agile thing. Now, I'll show you what that means. Uh, let's take okay. Let's take let's take staccato short, and a really good way of programming. Um, uh, sort of ostinati and short runs and things like that is using um, a step input and it's something which I've used before and you know regular viewers of the channel will be familiar with but let's just show you how it works because you what you're able to do is play it in um, note by note in your own time so you can work things out as you go So what it's done is it's played in a note um, and it's lined up with the uh, the quantization setting. So I've got it set for 16s. So now if we play that back, it'll play it in real time. But I've been able to play it in um, really slowly and think about each note in turn. So it's, it's a nice cross between um, programming stuff using uh, the mouse in the, um, uh, in the key editor. <laughs> 
okay now i'll show you the difference between um some of these shorts so let's just let shall we we're going to just set that going play <laughs> this might become irritating and if it becomes irritating oh, i'm sorry okay so we're going to cycle through some of these shorts so you see the difference right bold agile shorter you see So we got like half a dozen different ways of playing a short there and that is much more realistic than just having one so if you're trying to put a passage together um and I, okay let, let's just do that because that that makes uh, th uh, and let's do this actually um with a different instrument we'll go on to the cellos because we'll talk about one of the challenges of having all these um articulations um okay let's leap into the cellos uh, here they are uh, everybody wants to know about legato now you may have thought okay hang on we've the how are you changing what's all the what's what's all the key switch things i haven't got six hands and a nose you know you can't you can't go through you know go uh, program it that within it it's it's just not going to work is it so it's all right i have a system i have a system it's going to work fine um so this first bank here is the is the is the primary ones which you use your uh you, you use your normal key switches if you see there it goes pizzicato shorts longs okay now to go to the second um, batch you then use uh different key switches in a different part of the keyboard this time being c5 so we go there you go you see those ones going from pizzicato snap to col legno etc then you go to shorts and you can do the same thing um switch between them and then there's another set now panic he not i have a i devised a method for dealing with this um so it, in order to accommodate what are literally dozens of articulations um they have a sort of hierarchical key switch system which might strike dread into you ignore everything to the right of the first column to start with let's just go with this first column like a normal um a normal instrument so to speak and listen to It's lovely. You're going to portamento. And um, obviously, you know, as a powerful uh, library, uh, you have massive number of mic positions. And mic positions are becoming a big thing in the world of sampling, as you're aware. Um, so, for example, if you look here, uh, you you don't have to go through and you can obviously go through and mix all the stuff yourself if you are uh, a sort of uh, a Jake Jackson type guru. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to just take the reverb off so you can hear what it sounds like completely naked. It's a very nice room. I, and I, I always check ring rooms by using shorts. So this is uh, the shorts without any reverb. So it's a good sound stagey sort of rump. Now, if you want, you can whack, through, look at all these different mixes. So you can use room mics uh, presets with wide room. Okay, sounds nice. Um, or you can change the preset there. What should we go to? You see how different the sound is? Put some reverb back on it so you got a lot of choice right why don't we start faffing about and just write something and then you'll get some gist of how all this works oh okay and then actually i can show you my um system for dealing with these uh, key switches well i'll tell you what it is basically what i tend what i often do with uh with with key switches which is because a lot of libraries only really work properly with key switches they're designed to do it that way um and so go with the flow you know don't don't sort of um stroke the cat the wrong way because you'll get bitten and scratched because cats hate that why am i talking about i haven't got a cat <laughs> what guy honestly 
Right, meanwhile, back with the... So what I tend to do is, what you can do is you play in... Uh, let's, get, let's get some legato up. Um, you can play things in... And then you create a second track, a MIDI track, which is rooted to the same um, instrument as that. So let me just get rid of this control track and I'll put it in from scratch. So we go add track and you can do this in any door and you just call that control. Um, and then rather than it going to uh, the cello in channel two, root it to channel one. So it's exactly the same. Now, all you do on this one is when you play it in, watch my little hand down here, hi, um, is we play in the um, uh, the various uh, key switches. So if I then bring the key switch up so you can see it, uh, you can probably, oh, it's a bit small, but anyway, look, we'll just go for this. So you play that in, and then the good bit um, is because it's in there, you can mess about with it. You can change the keys, move it up and down. You can make it, you can change where it is. You can do all that kind of thing. So my uh, approach with a, a really powerful library like this one um, is this first rank, this, this column here, which basically gives you the same amount of choice you get with most normal libraries, um, I play in in real time. So if I'm going to go, uh, say I'm going to go for legato. Let's, uh, let's okay, I said I was going to write something. Let's just do something. Okay, here, uh, we haven't played the vi uh, violas yet. Okay, let's start with a viola short. A bit loud, Mr. Viola. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I need to work out what I'm going to write. Hang on. Uh, okay, let me. Why don't I go with a kind of little, sim very simple ostinato to start with? Okay. So that's um, that's that in. Now let's have a legato uh, cello. Okay. looped and that was going quite uh, all right okay let's I've now given myself a bit more room the idea was there it's just as ever red light syndrome I cocked it up Um, that's all right. Uh, we obviously are missing a bar of uh, uh, viola. Okay, back there. Right, now let's now work out what we want those. The violas sound a bit short at the moment. So what are we going to do with them? Better. 
you said, you know, you thought you'd never need 488 six um, different articulations, but we've now gone through uh, at least six of them trying to find out what's the best sound for this. Staccato short was too um, short, particularly agile. Agile tends to be shorter and tighter, and bold tends to be a bit longer. Staccato, so what we've gone for actually is staccato agile. There you go. Things you never thought you'd need, which you now find essential. <laughs> Sorry. So ah, oh no. That, why, why did I open my big mouth? That wasn't what we wanted because it's too loud. Well, let's just, hang on, let's turn it down first. Yes, staccato short bold. That's too short. That's a little bit longer. Spiccato is a bit, it's not right for this. Detaché. Okay, that's all right. Now let's turn our attention to our friend, um, the cello. Uh, let's get this line singing out um, because it sounds fine, but it could do with a bit of help. So let's have a look at the various types of legato we got going on here. Okay, which one? C5, okay, up there. Right, so this is regular vibrato. And Q. Molto. Senza. Espressivo. I think it's going to be a mixture of um, regular and espressivo. Let me just record. Now I'm going to record the uh, key switches into the control track. Here we go. So that is regular and that is espressivo. Okay, let's give this a go. Start with regular. dropped out a bit there didn't it um so what should we go with uh let's try that one this is, oh my lord look at that so i've got a whole load of crossfades which presumably i can do uh, okay that's too much for my small brain today let's go regular and molto then and i'm also r riding the volume here as well let's go regular first time through Just the cheeky bit of sense of vibrato I threw in there. <laughs> cheeky sense of vibrato. Okay, let's uh, now add something else. Um, let's add a violin one line. Okay, what have we got going on here? Uh, uh, let's go with some long notes. We haven't played with those much. Um, Uh, what else have we got? Espressivo. Espressivo sends a vibrato. Oh, I love that. See, this is a really good example of where you would actually get your pencil and paper out because there's no substitute for... It's not my normal way of working and I'm, I'm quite slow at it. But, you know, if I'm doing something like this, you, you really need to see where your notes are going. I'm trying to think of a more interesting harmonic movement than just...
Okay, let's do that. Here we go. Nearly, I'm going to start on an open fifth. That went really, really, really well, didn't it? No. Right, now what we do, uh, having played those in, I found it easier to play them in um, at the same time, but actually I'm going to put one on second violin and one on um, first violin. So I'm just going to delete the lower line from the first violins and I'm going to delete the upper line from the second violins and then we can um, have a little play with both of them because they become independent but related instruments so now we're going to add a track because as i say with this uh, library uh, you've got so much choice you really want to uh, make the most of you know there's no point not making the most of these so change that to channel one so now this midi channel is addressing violin one this control track here is going to address violin one as uh, violin two right so violin two So where's oh, now? Do we we could go on to legato senza vibrato, uh, espressivo senza vibrato. So we could try that and see see how. So rather than using the straight long, we're now going to use a, a, a legato sample, and we're going to make sure all these uh, things overlap. Uh, because if they don't overlap, you won't trigger the legato. Let's see if that sounds any different. Let's see how it's going to go. Okay. I quite like that actually. Uh, now let's do the same with because we haven't um, messed with this one yet. Okay, so I've just extended the releases so that now all of that is going to be triggered by. Here we go. Let's get this over. So what kind of es so we've got espressivo senza vibrato, and if I go up to G one, this note here. That is going to give us. <laughs> A half tone trill? I don't think so. Okay, I wonder if we can hear any difference between uh, the legato and legato agile. Uh, to, uh, I don't think we want agile for this though. To be no. Try portamento. Let's try portamento. Oh no, that's too much. Normal legato, espress no, sense vibrato, or regular with soft release and a soft attack. Let's try that, see if it sounds too much, because I quite like the sense of vibrato. Okay, now let's add a bass in. And I'm going 
going to have a base pits in here. Uh, short, where's pits, 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 pits? There, hello pits. Normal pits. And we're going to go loose, uh, so it sounds more realistic. Right. That may be too loose, actually. Okay, let's let's go with that. Do you want this view? Yeah, let's do this view. Hang on, I'm going to... Two, three, four. Do it again. That's it. <laughs> Look. You can produce a very, very realistic um, sample output with this. That may not necessarily be what everybody wants all the time. They want, you know, a thousand uh, violins and a massive full on sound. This is not that sound. Um, it is a very, very detailed, and I stand by my claim, this is the most detailed string sample I've ever played. Um, you know, it gives you a lot of um, options. Options take time. And so it might not necessarily be the quickest way of getting um, your uh, music out, but you will end up with something which will sound more like 20 players uh, in a room. And because this is, a, and chamber strings is a very, you know, um, it's a very sort of carter bell, a very contemporary film scoring sort of sound. Um, you can layer this on top of uh, the, the VSL um, Synchron Strings Pro, which is the larger ensemble, so that you can give some sort of depth and some, this can give sort of precision to, you know, it's all good, it's all good. I really like this, and if this is your style of writing, um, and VSL very much appeals to people who, uh, who want this kind of realism and detail, then uh, I would uh, encourage you to check it out. It's, uh, it's great. Thank you very much, VSL, who have lent me the uh, uh, whatever this is, demo version. I, need to, I think this is a final version. Anyway, uh, um, Paul at uh, VSL has offered me this. Thank you very much indeed. And um, I hope you enjoyed this little you know, trip down string scoring lane, whatever, the, wherever we are. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Um, remember that uh, subscribing to the channel is still... For a limited time only, completely free. No, it's always free. You just click the button and do the dingly thing. And then, you know, useful things like this, which combine reviews with some technique, which you might find useful. Uh, whether you're working on a free library or a you know, big expensive one, doesn't matter. These techniques still apply. Um, and of course, we teach uh, ThinkSpace Education. Uh, we teach all this stuff. You know, so if you want to learn sample orchestration, how to write music, we do short courses and all those kind of things, details below. And if you're a serious composer and you want to do film and television music for a living, or games music, or game sound design, or any number of other things, uh, check out our postgraduate courses. Our online postgraduate courses, we're very, very proud of. It's our flagship products and, you know, we have a really great community of students and, um, you know, it's a great way to maximise your potential. So, look, check all that out, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio.